Here we go. Welcome back to the Tracy Boards Recording Studio where we have another race to nine playing the greatest game on earth. Today we have a guest in our studio by the name of Ron Langell. Ron is a was a fairly new face in the NCA scene uh, before things uh, came to a grinding halt there, but he was definitely an up-and-comer. He had made his way all the way to, I believe he was 11th place in the NCA standings. If you watch the footage on Crokinole Center of our Accelerate tournament back in December of 2019, you would have seen his smiling face there. But uh, we're off to the races here. Jeremy sinks that first open 20. Ron's the first to miss, so now we get into a little more interesting Jeremy's going to go for the hit and stick. He, I'm not sure if he was going for a drift 20 there, but a little bit fortunate. He did manage to get Ron's disc off the board, and now he's up a 20 and has two on. So he's definitely in good shape. I'm not sure if Ron was going for a double there, but uh, now Jeremy's position improves even further. He has three discs on and a 20 advantage. Ron biding his time, waiting for some sort of an opportunity to score a double, to have an angle in for a 20, something to, to change the momentum in this round. I think he's lining up for an angle in 20. It's gonna be a little tight to get past that one peg. Yeah, that one right there, he caught it just a little bit. He had to go for it though, he's getting to that point in the round, he's running out of bullets. That's a much better opportunity for him there. Wide open coming through those pegs and drains it. It's shots like that that help Ron uh, do really well in the NCA scene. Jeremy drops to one side, draining that open 20, and then yeah, Ron takes care of the double, but he's, uh, he's in deep here. Even with the hammer, he needs Jeremy to set up some sort of an opportunity, which he does not. Uh, keeping that shooter just outside the host makes it nearly impossible. Uh, nothing's impossible, I guess, but uh, nearly impossible for Ron to create anything. He's, uh, he's going to try something very tough here. He's going to try to catch that peg, then the disc. Uh, super low percentage shot, but yeah, at that point in the round, you just got to go for it. Jeremy's up in this race to nine, and by taking that first round, he's up two to zero. And it will be Ron to start this round. A little bit heavy. That was a good line on that, but a little bit heavy. Right away, getting into the interesting Crokinole, away from that 20s race. Jeremy probably would have liked to pull that back a little bit further because Ron does have an opportunity to get the off, catch a peg, maybe make something happen there on the board. Oh, so close. So close. The nice thing for Ron is he's got to pull back to his side which uh, better chance uh, better chance to have an opening created here, just like this one. See if Ron can pull off another angle in 20. Oh, just a tad off. Perfect weight, just a little bit off on that angle. Jeremy basically doing a hit and stick. That's a pretty good spot. Doesn't really give Ron any great opportunities. So Ron wisely just to hit and stick himself, just waiting for a better opportunity to set up. Oh, even nicer. Jeremy's got himself fairly well snugged up against that post. Ron trying the bounce back, but the angle wasn't super friendly for it. Jeremy back in command of this round. No 20s, but uh, Jeremy with the hammer and two buttons on definitely has him in a commanding position. Oh, great. Take out 20. Puts a little bit of pressure on Jeremy. He's pretty, yeah, he's, he's really going to want this 20 in order to stay in command. Drops to the other side and drains it, keeping the pressure on Ron, who's probably going to have to go for a bounce back again. He got a bounce back, all right. <laughs> he got a bounce back, all right. And uh, yeah, he bounced his opponent's button right back into the center. Pretty much the worst shot you can make in Crokinole, but it happens when you're going for, going to take a big risk sometimes, uh, yeah, it doesn't work out. Jeremy graciously accepts that gift from his opponent, Ron, and takes a four to zero lead in this race to nine. Jeremy to, 
take the first shot in round three. Yeah, both players are struggling a little bit with their open 20s. Ron does a fantastic shot, pulling that back basically. Oh, Jeremy goes for the hit and stick. I don't think that's what he meant to do. I was expecting a peel there, but oh, great shot from Ron, getting himself tucked behind that post. There will be an opportunity for a double take out if he can catch the angle just right. Well, he caught the peg just right. So uh, see if Ron's able to capitalize on this. Pulls the super Steve, blows it all the way through the house. A 20 there would have been a bit of a dagger shot. Jeremy, uh, yeah, not once but twice, testing the durability of that peg. That time Ron is not gonna let this opportunity get away from him. Yeah, third time's trying time. Catches the button behind the peg, but not able to get the angle right in order to take out that second green one. Ron, again, drains that 20. Very, very commanding lead. Jeremy has no choice but to peel here. The play is to just hope and pray that Ron comes up short, <laughs> just like that, and breathes a little bit of life into this round. Ron up two 20s to, near, to, to one, and then he... Uh, Decides to do John Conrad proud, do the infamous Conrad shot. And the idea with that is that uh, the opponent may be able to get a 20 or they may be able to get the off, but they're gonna be very hard pressed to get both. And Ron positioned that Conrad very nicely and uh, not leaving Jeremy any much of anything to work with there. So four to two in this race to 20 going into round four. Ron opens up with a 20. Players are catching their groove now, maybe. Oh, one of the players is catching his groove. Jeremy's still a little off in those open 20s. Ah, I'm thinking Ron was probably trying to pull that back because now there is a bit of an opportunity here to catch a peg. At least the play stays in the house. See, in there, Jeremy's going to be able to have an opportunity to make something happen, whereas if Ron gets a pull back on his side of the board, he absolutely has control. Most likely Jeremy would peel at that point, opening the door for another open 20, but here we are. We'll see. Oh, doing the reset. Oh, great shot. Gets the off and the 20. Ron right back on track with his open 20s. Jeremy continues to struggle in the open 20s department. That was very close. You even saw that disc wobble a little bit. Ron is... Uh, <laughs> Jeremy going for the follow-through 20, but uh, instead caught a peg and came back for the 20. We are now 2-2 in the 20s cup. And that... Uh, that bank back 20 really changed the momentum of the round. Now Jeremy's very much in command here. I, would, I shouldn't say very much in command. He does have an advantage. Ron's going to need the off and the 20. He got the 20, but now uh, without getting the off, now all Jeremy needs to do is have a valid shot, which he does. So he wins the round on the board, giving him a 6-2 to two lead. See, in that position, if Ron had been able to get the off and the 20, then Jeremy would have had, been, had to, under pressure, make a 20 just to tie the round. And uh, as I say, he's been struggling with his open 20s in this match for some reason. So that would have been, Ron would have been in good shape. Continues to struggle. The line was good, but the weight was a little heavy. I always say at least you miss on the right side of the hole. It's better than coming up a little bit short and leaving your leaving your opponent basically a gimme 20 isn't definitely isn't what you want. Ron's uh, Ron's taking a turn at testing the durability of the pegs there. Players having a bit of a chuckle, laughing at themselves, which uh, ideally you can do. Again. Wow, definitely not an open 20s clinic. I, I'm gonna suggest Jeremy goes back and watches skills tips one and two to focus on his open 20 skills. I suspect Ron was going for the double there, but uh, ideally he would have kept a shooter on. Instead, we're back to an open board. Jeremy making an adjustment of shooting too strong and this time comes up a little light, but at least not. Uh, not in a in a position that gave her on a gimme 20. Oh. Going for a big shot. 
nice. Ron's going to show him how it's done. Getting the Open 20s race started. Continues to struggle. Oh. Almost catching that bounce back 20. I tell you, it's probably one of the toughest things in this game is when you when you lose the touch on your open 20s, getting it back as quickly as possible. Because, yeah, it... Uh, if you're struggling with your 20s and your opponent is hitting them, you're you're pretty well, much hooped. The funny thing is a lot of people sometimes they say it's going to become just a 20 scheme. Mm. Everybody's going to get through. It never works out that way. Nope. Player's taking a minute to discuss how... Uh, how this definitely has not been a 20s race. <laughs> how, how this match has been an opportunity for them to work on their other skills. Maybe we're just not good enough. Yes, that's what we sit at the end of the round with only 120 between us. Jeremy probably going for a peg, hoping for another bounce back 20 there, leaving Ron a pretty simple shot. Ron actually didn't even need to shoot at that point. He had already won. Um, a six to four. Going into the next round, see if the players are able to shake this off. The uh, the struggle with the twenties. See if we can get that straightened away. Ron has definitely uh, been stronger on the open twenties in this match. There, Jeremy finds his range. Can be uh, can be very satisfying to hit that first one, and you just go, okay, yep, yeah, there. Now I got it back, and it can be a real uh, real confidence boost just to get that first one. Jeremy, they're playing a little bit of trickery. We'll see if it bites them or not, but it actually worked out fairly well because Ron is not going to be able to go through his own on this one because that green one is right up against the peg. He's probably going to be forced to shoot Hogan's Alley. Great shot getting that, although he didn't get the off. So now Jeremy's left with two on, although he has set up an opportunity for a double. Let's see if Ron goes for it. Absolutely drains it. Great shot. Leaving his in the house, which is exactly where he wants to be. Creating, uh, playing for the future, trying to create a situation where, where he can get a 20 because Jeremy has the hammer. The pressure is on Ron to somehow set up a situation where he can get a 20 for himself. Going for the bounce back and the peg. Oh. Really nice pull back there. That's kind of that, uh, that hidden spot that almost forces the play. He may have a line through here. It looks like he was going for it, but if that, uh, if you can get right in the middle of that five quadrant and right in the middle, it forces the opponent to shoot across that center hole, which is such a tricky shot. The high level players can do it with a fairly high success rate. Now it was Jeremy taking a shot at doing the Conrad, definitely not as good at it as Ron, and it's definitely, really definitely not as good at it as the infamous JC John Conrad, but does, does make a defensive shot, but yeah. Right there, you saw Ron was almost able to make something out of that. Jeremy going for another aggressive shot there, just a little too strong off that peg. And uh, I suspect, if I remember correctly, I was trying to peel everything off and uh, leave it so the only thing left was the, the one in the five on, on the near side of the board. All Jeremy needed to do with that final shot was get a simple takeout. Uh, yeah, even if he had lost a shooter in the process, he still would have won with that uh, with that five point button on the board. Here we are in a eight to four, eight to four at this point. We'll see if Jeremy can close the show here. Opens up with that twenty. Nice. See you now if the players are finally going to catch their groove and get into a good old twenties race. Nope. Jeremy is the first to miss. Again, Ron with that generosity. Oh, yeah. See, it's 
<laughs> bit of a house rule in the, in the Tracy household. When you when you drain a 20 for your opponent, you have to pull it out yourself. And what we often do is that uh, we say that the player has to put it in their own 20 cup. So for the rest of the round, they need to look at that and just feel, just feel utter shame for having dropped a, a 20 for their opponent. Obviously, we don't really mean that, but uh, yeah, just it's just a fun thing we like to do. A little extra rub it in when you make that absolutely terrible shot of, of draining a draining a twenty for your opponent. We've all been there, so yeah, you know we're we're laughing with the opponent, not at the opponent. But uh, regardless, Jeremy's in a commanding lead of this round. See that setup? He's uh, trying to claim that that was an intentional setup. I think he's I think he's uh, yeah, blowing he's smoke. But <laughs> regardless, Ron is in a very tough situation here. He needs to he needs to weave some magic. I like what you're doing there. Ron is going to try to say he, he wants He's willing to take big risks to try to take that take a, take away that setup that is in place right now. It's a very it's going to be a very tricky shot, but he uh, he felt like he had to go for it in, in order to have any chance. So yeah, the angle wasn't great for it, but uh, I absolutely admire the creativity and the the go for itness of it all. I'm going to make up terms here, but uh, yeah, runs in deep at this point. Just goes for a, a takeout, doesn't quite get it. As Nathan would say, inconsequential. Jeremy's trying a fancy shot here. He's going to drive two discs in, <laughs> which, have which, around, have I given you which uh, bit him. And yeah, what they're talking about now is he shouldn't have been messing around because if he had have done the disastrous give his opponent a 20, then it would have opened up the possibility for a tie. But uh, yeah. Taking a little less seriously, just being a basement battle. But uh, even though this wasn't a super high quality 20s race, hopefully this was still good entertainment for you. You got to see some different shots set up. Throw a comment down below. What was your what was your favorite shot, or what did you learn by watching this? What are you going to apply to a future match? Hope you enjoyed. Make it a great day. We'll see you again soon.